With every new episode of House of the Dragon, we get a whole bunch of new easter eggs to discover, and episode 3 was no different. While you might have noticed a couple of these references, we're sure there's a few you've missed. And in today's video, we'll be going over all the easter eggs from the third episode of the series. So let's dive right in. First off, we've got an easter egg about the song Rhaenyra loved listening to. Our first scene of the princess in episode 3 is with her reading a book while repeatedly telling a bard to play a specific song. From the lyrics of this song, some observant fans were able to figure out that it's apparently a reference to Nymeria. If you're well versed with your A Song of Ice and Fire lore, you'll know that Nymeria was a warrior princess that led her people to Dorne after an all-out war against the Valyrians. The warrior princess was also previously mentioned when Alicent and Rhaenyra read about her in the first episode. Considering both these scenes involve Rhaenyra, we wonder if she's going to take a page from Nymeria's book on how to lead people. Although, there's another possible reason why this specific story is being highlighted so much. HBO has another Game of Thrones prequel in the works. Called 10,000 Ships, this will revolve around Princess Nymeria and her journey to Dorne. So who knows, maybe it's a shout out to the upcoming series. Moving ahead, we got a nod to Targaryen dreams. Dreams play a big role in the decisions of Targaryens. Aegon's dream, which is the very thing the series gets its name from, A Song of Ice and Fire, is about how the White Walk would unleash a long night. It was this dream that caused Aegon to conquer Westeros to stop the oncoming threat. There's also the dream of Daenys, who saw the doom of Valyria causing the Targaryens to move to Dragonstone. Much like them, Viserys discusses his dream in this episode about how his son would be sitting upon the Iron Throne. Up next, the episode introduced us to two major characters. Episode 3 of the House of the Dragon was focused on Rhaenyra's feelings and her thinking of how she's being replaced by her father father now that he has a male heir. While some fans describe the episode as a slow burn, leading to a climactic final battle in the Stepstones, it actually quite cleverly introduced us to some major characters who we'll be seeing later down the line. If you've read the Fire and Blood novel series, you might have noticed Laris Clubfoot and Harwin Breakbones making their way to the series in this episode. While they haven't been formally introduced as major players to the story right now, rest assured they'll prove to be quite important later on. They're both both sons of Lionel Strong. Laris Clubfoot gets his name because in the book, he has an injured foot, and we see that he carries a cane in the TV series too. On the other hand, we've got Harwin Breakbones, who's known for his massive size and strength. Next on the list, here's a detail about the elusive Whiteheart Stag. Much of the episode is dedicated to hunting the Whiteheart Stag, a rare creature that has an almost mythical status among people. The king perceives it as being a sign to see it hunted on his son's second name day. But of course, it's actually Rhaenyra who manages to come across the stag, indicating her potential future as heir. The Whiteheart stag also links to Game of Thrones in an interesting way. It's the name that was given to a ship which was part of Joffrey Baratheon's royal fleet. The ship was destroyed during the Battle of Blackwater, which many might recall was between King's Landing and Dragonstone. Is this yet another reference to the upcoming Dance of the Dragons? The imagery of seeing a Whiteheart stag is also similar to Arya seeing the white horse in the Bells episode of Game of Thrones. Both Arya and Rhaenyra share some similarities, as they don't conform to gender roles and have a strong inclination towards Nymeria. Arya even sails to see what's west of Westeros in the series finale, so we wonder if Rhaenyra might share a similar fate in House of the Dragon. Moving on, we've got a few easter eggs about Ser Kristen Cole. This episode gave us a bit more screen time with Ser Kristen Cole. He discussed how his father served at Blackhaven which is a castle under House Dondarrion. If that name's familiar to you, that's because it's the house Beric Dondarrion is from. Plus, Castle Blackhaven is also where Barristan the Bold served at, so it's clear that the location has quite a bit of history. Cole also mentions the White Book in this episode. This is a book that records all the notable actions of every Kingsguard member, and has been mentioned quite a few times in Game of Thrones. We even get to see it make an appearance in the finale, when Brienne of Tarth updates Jaime Lannister entry in it. Not to mention, the boar attack in this episode isn't the first for the series either. Boars in the world of Westeros seem notoriously dangerous. Not only did one get too close to Rhaenyra this episode, but of course, who can forget, that's how King Robert Barathon lost his life too. After a surprise boar attack mortally wounded the king during his hunting party, it really sets the events of the rest of the series in motion. And so, let's just say the boars of Westeros are as much of a serious 
various political figure as the kings and queens. Though it should be mentioned that the Lannisters definitely had a hand in making sure the king was too drunk to take on the boar properly. Interestingly enough, much like King Baratheon, King Viserys also showed more interest in hunting and drinking over politicking, despite the efforts of his small council. We wonder if they'll end up sharing the same fate, with someone paving the way for the king's exit. Plus, if you thought the Lannister brothers were familiar, here's why. House of the Dragon has finally brought the Lannister household into the mix with its newest episode. Lord Jason and his twin brother, Tyland, are the two new Lannister characters we were introduced to in the third episode of the series. And if they look familiar to you, there's a pretty good reason why. The actor playing them, Jefferson Hall, is no stranger to Game of Thrones. In fact, he's previously played the role of Ser Hugh of the Val in two episodes of the show's first season. The role wasn't too big, so bringing him back isn't that big of a deal. Of course, with the introduction of the Lannisters, we also got to hear of Casserly Rock. Fans of Game of Thrones might recall seeing this location in the seventh season of the series. The mountain fortress is said to be so high up that on a clear day, one can see as far as the wall across the Sunset Sea. We don't think this is actually true, just considering how far apart these places are, but we suppose Jason was willing to make anything up to woo the young princess. Interestingly, both the wall and the Sunset Sea play a key part in the finale of Game of Thrones, because they're places where two of the Stark kids, John and Arya, end up going to. We've also got to mention a direct reference to the books from this episode. Since it's based on a novel series, we're bound to see many references and easter eggs to J.R.R. Martin's Fire and Blood, and a rather direct one from the third episode was King Viserys calling Rhaenyra the realm's delight. This, of course, is due to her being much loved by the people of King's Landing. Overall, Rhaenyra in the books is shown to be more adored by her father and the public, but that really hasn't made its way into the series that much as of yet, but we wonder if we'll see more of that support in the coming episodes. It would make her eventual falling out with the people of the King's Landing hit that much more if we knew that she was loved by most at one point. Wrapping up this video with an easter egg about the Battle of the Stepstones. We finally got our first big battle of House of the Dragon, and it definitely looked like it took a page from Game of Thrones. Not just from how it all played out, but the directing and cinematography reminded us a lot of the Battle of the Bastards. This isn't too much of a surprise though, as the prequel's co-showrunner Miguel Sapochnik is the one who directed that episode. Much like how Jon rushed into a one-on-one -on -one against Ramsay, Damon went up against the crab feeder. There was also a sequence of someone having to run away from arrows flying against them. All you had to do was zigzag, Rickon. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these easter eggs did you manage to find on your first viewing? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.